Well, welcome back to City Line here in my kitchen. Uh, speaking <laughs> of kitchens, this next woman, um, she she has the recipe for success down pat here in Tacoma. Um, if you are new to Tacoma and you do not know Donna Ponapito, doesn't she have the best name? I have to tell you that she is the president and CEO of the United Way of Pierce County. And uh, one of the fiercest women I know, Donna, mm. welcome back to City Line. Thank you. It's good to see you. Good to see you too. We were saying that this time last year, you <laughs> were uh, we were in studio, we were on the couch, and we were in your pitch the ditch farmer uh, house. <laughs> uh, and it just seems like it was yesterday, but in many ways it was not. <laughs> right. <laughs> so November, speaking of that, November 10th marks the annual uh, Poverty Summit, which you named from poverty to possibilities. And um, I understand that you had for some time prior to the first summit, which was last year, you've, you've wanted to do this for a while for Tacoma. So when you think about what was your motivation and, and how did it come to be an annual event that attracts um, experts from Pierce County and beyond. I mean, this was this was a growing up really quick of this event. Yeah, you know, we um, well, this is the fourth annual one, um, and so wow. uh, you know, when um, I had this idea a while back, when when United Way real when we put the stake in the ground to focus on poverty and removing the barriers to poverty and focusing on those Alice families, the asset limited income constrained employed, those families that are working every day uh, to make ends uh, meet and they just can't, they're struggling. Uh, and so once we, we said, this is what we want to focus in on, I felt it was really important to figure out ways in which to engage the community. So bringing the experts around the table, bringing community leaders, bringing the community, those that are experiencing poverty to, to, to not only just talk about barriers, so many times we're talking just about the barriers, but to really create this space where we can talk about, uh, where we can speak to solutions. What are those, those bright spots that are working and what are things that we can, can uh, that we can as a collective uh, work on together. So that's, uh, that is, it just was so important for me and for United Way to create that kind of a space for people to come together from all sectors of the community to figure out how do we make sure that more people are um, not struggling in our community. And, and you've, 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 you've created that safety blanket so well uh, through uh, this summit. Every year has a focus or a theme. So for this year, what's the focus? So this year, um, you know, last year we focused on affordable housing. And each year we try to go deep into a particular area. And this year, you know, with everything with COVID-19, with um, the, um, you know, rising, you know, um, issues around racial injustices with the, you know, the, the all the murders that continue to happen with uh, black men and women. Um, you know, there's this whole idea of how do you, you know, um, disrupt poverty by looking at the, inter the intersections of trauma, equity, and resilience. And, you know, because all of these incidences that are happening, COVID-19, you know, the racial injustices, the fires, you know, other things that are happening, those are traumatizing. Um, and so many of these things have been traumatizing, not just for the people impacted, but for our community. And, and even more so for those individuals that are struggling every day and that are in poverty. And so, how, you know, can we begin to look at, uh, you know, disrupting poverty by paying attention to the impact of trauma on individuals? And, you know, at the end, how can we become a more resilient community, you know, by paying attention to the inequities that are in the systems, right? And so keeping equity in the center is, is important to all of this. And if we're paying attention to equity, then we can, can we come out at the end uh, being a more vibrant, resilient community? So that's what this, that's what it's all about this year. <laughs> And, and, and as you and I both know, I mean, we both we both speak the saying. I'm going to say next is that we know that 
The opposite of poverty is not wealth. The opposite of poverty is justice. Yes. <laughs> Brian Stevenson, I mean, in so yes. <laughs> that lens, and you look at equity, trauma, and resilience, all of that is part of that whole story. Right. So these are huge topics to cover over a four hour summit. So how do you hope <laughs> to accomplish that? And how are you gonna define it as successful? Well, you know, we're gonna have um, when Dr. Wendy Ellis, who is um, with the George Washington University uh, and the um, oversees the um, building community resilience um, efforts uh, that are now across the country. And in fact, I was on a webinar with her earlier this morning. Um, and so, you know, she's going to be speaking about um, this whole idea of uh, trauma, equity, and resilience as it relates to um, childhood, adverse childhood experiences. Hey, as, uh, yes, as well as talking about adverse community environments. You know, she is actually the creator of this uh, notion called pair of aces. And so when we think about uh, adverse childhood experiences and, and what the effects that has on so many people throughout their entire life, we, we sometimes forget that, you know, these, these experiences happen, you know, in adverse community environments. And so she will weave that into her um, discussion, tying that into racial inequities and the racial injustices that are happening. Uh, and then we'll have a panel of experts. Um, so we've got Lori Finkst, who's with the um, uh, department, uh, DSHS, Department of Social and Health Services, um, who was really the lead facilitator of the governor's poverty uh, reduction work group that had been meeting for the last two years and will be coming out with a final report to the governor by the end of this year. Uh, Sabrina Chambers, who is with the health department here in Tacoma and has also been the lead on the work that the health department did in declaring racism as a public health issue. Uh, and then we have um, uh, uh, someone from uh, Hope Sparks. Um, and I can't think of her name right now, but she is a, um, she is a, uh, a social worker with Hope Sparks, and she focuses in on trauma uh, and resilience. Uh, so, you know, we have these great folks that are gonna be talking about, you know, uh, the issue of trauma and resilience within, you know, their uh, specific areas, but also too, we're gonna give people a chance to talk. You know, that part of the excitement of this is having, you know, people talk to one another. And this is a virtual event, so it'll be interesting to see how this all works out. We're going to have everyone break out into uh, breakout groups and um, be able to have conversations about. So, you know, what are you hearing and what are the things that we can be thinking about as a community when it comes to um, the intersections of trauma, equity and um, uh, resilience? I, I love that. that <laughs> I, I'm like, okay, I am so there. <laughs> um, so tell us about this year's Pitch the Ditch Challenge. Okay, so, you know, we, we are excited. We, we have another three finalists. Uh, this year for the Pitch to Ditch. Uh, and, you know, the Pitch to Ditch really started as an idea, again, an idea that I had where, you know what, there's so many, uh, there's so many things happening out in communities and people are doing great things throughout the community. Let's put a challenge out there uh, for groups to come up with, um, you know, a great idea on how to break the cycle of poverty, how to remove the barriers. And so we did the contest um, contest again this year. Uh, we'll, the, the winners will be, will be showing a videotape of their, um, their idea um, on November 10th. And so, you know, we the idea center, uh, one group is going to be focused on the homeless population and how they uh, have ideas to um, make sure that we are um, yeah, providing those individuals that are homeless with the supports that they need to move out of homelessness. Um, the uh, Another big idea is around um, uh, 
looking at uh, the hilltop area and um, again, shelters, uh, looking at, you know, are there enough shelters? Are we providing the kind of supports uh, that we need with when it comes to shelters? And then um, the last one is focused on businesses and churches uh, within the hilltop area. And, you know, again, making sure that they have the, you know, cleaning supplies and all the things they need uh, when it comes to just being able to support individuals in their communities as a result of COVID. And that was the other thing about this year's challenge. We wanted to make sure that it focused um, not just on removing the barriers to poverty, but keeping it in the context of the racial injustices that are happening as well as um, COVID-19. Absolutely. So my last question for you, my dear, because it, it's a big one. If you could <laughs> wave your magic wand and have four guests from anywhere in the world attend this event coming up, who would they be? Yeah, I was giving this some thought. Four guests. Um, let's see, who would they be? I would, you know, I would have... Um, uh, someone from, well, you know, a couple of years ago, we had Michael uh, McAfee, who's with Policy Link, and I would like for him to come back as a guest. Um, because he, you know, the, his organization really goes deep into uh, addressing racial inequity. Um, so I would love to have him back again, you know, a couple of years later to be a part of the conversation in, in given the world that we're in right now um, and everything that's going on. So that would be uh, one person, you know, I would probably want, you know, um, I'm not, I'm missing out on names today, but the uh, reelected uh, prime minister of New Zealand. Um, <laughs> she's yes, yes. yes, and I can't think of her name, but um, she would be a wonderful guest uh, to talk about the things that she has done in her country and what we can learn from. Yes. Uh, yeah, I think we can learn a lot, not just in terms of COVID, but but you know how she has dealt with all of the you know competing issues. Yes. Um, and well, and. Just Let's just leave it at two then, because I okay. think it's great to end with her because she is uh, she is someone that would get in there and pitch the ditch. So. Yes. Go ahead. I was just going to say one thing. I, I found the name of the person. I felt bad not knowing her name. Anne Shankel, who's with Hope Sparks, is okay. the other panelist. <laughs> Donna, thank you for taking time out of the prep for this summit coming up, because whenever you have an event coming up, time seems to just turn into uh, nothing. So um, I know that you've got a lot on your plate. Thank you so much for what you and your team do for us, for the joy, for the education, and for always showing up. Um, you, you are fabulous, and uh, I want you back in my kitchen soon, okay? I will be back. Thank you so very much. So good to see you. You too, my dear. Give my best. Okay. Love. I will. All right. We have much more to come on City Line. We're going to pause for a quick break. Don't go away. We'll be right back.